Ever wonder what happened to those Hollywood stars who seemed to vanish into thin air after being nominated for an Oscar? Well, today we're diving into the mystery of the top 30 actors who disappeared from the spotlight after their moment of Academy Award glory. Let's uncover their stories and find out what happened to them. 30. Joan Hackett Only When I Laugh Joan Hackett, a celebrated figure in stage, film, and television, reached a pinnacle in her career with her first Oscar nomination for her role in Only When I Laugh a bittersweet Neil Simon film. The movie, based on Simon's play, The Gingerbread Lady, showcased Hackett's remarkable talent, earning her critical acclaim and industry recognition. Following this success, she appeared in The Escape Artist, but tragically, her promising career was cut short when she succumbed to ovarian cancer. Reflecting on her career, Hackett's journey was marked by memorable performances and accolades. The success of Only When I Laugh in 1981 garnered her a Golden Globe Award and an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. However, her battle with cancer overshadowed her triumph and she attended the award ceremony in a wheelchair. 29. Carrie Snodgrass, Diary of a Mad Housewife Carrie Snodgrass rose to prominence in 1970 with her captivating performance in Diary of a Mad Housewife, establishing herself as an ingenue on the rise in Hollywood. However, her decision to step away from acting to prioritize her personal life came as a surprise to many. Snodgrass chose to live with her then-boyfriend, Neil Young, and their special needs son on a ranch, opting for a quieter life away from the spotlight. Despite her hiatus from acting, Snodgrass eventually returned to the industry in the 1980s, showcasing her versatility in both film and television. However, her comeback did not lead to a resurgence in her celebrity status, leaving many to wonder about the trajectory of her career. A bizarre twist in her story emerged when Sylvester Stallone pursued her for the role of Adrian in Rocky, a role she turned down due to financial considerations. 28. Elizabeth Shue, Leaving Las Vegas Elizabeth Shue, known as an 80s darling, seemed poised for a meteoric rise in her career after her Oscar-nominated performance in Leaving Las Vegas. However, her trajectory took an unexpected turn, and while she continued to work steadily, her roles didn't quite elevate her to the A-list status many anticipated. Instead, she found herself typecast in thankless girlfriend and mom roles in a series of lackluster films. Despite her apparent disappearance from public life for extended periods, Shu's absence may be attributed to her disinterest in celebrity culture rather than a decline in passion for acting. In an interview with Pop Entertainment, she revealed her genuine love for her craft, expressing contentment with her career path. Shu's attitude reflects a grounded approach to fame, prioritizing fulfilling roles and meaningful collaborations over the pursuit of stardom. I just really enjoy the work that I do, she remarked. Every year I seem to find one movie. As long as I can do that, that's really the point. 27. Roberto Benigni, Life is Beautiful Roberto Benigni's Oscar win for Life is Beautiful may not sit well with everyone, especially considering the competition. But let's set aside personal opinions for a moment. Benigni's portrayal in the film is undeniably powerful, offering a poignant depiction of a father's desperate attempt to shield his son from the horrors of the Holocaust. Despite his limited English vocabulary, Benigni's performance resonates deeply, capturing the essence of humanity amidst unimaginable suffering. However, Benigni's transition to Hollywood wasn't seamless. His next project, Pinocchio, was met with critical disdain, earning a rare 0% on Rotten Tomatoes and receiving six Razzie nominations. To add insult to injury, Benigni himself won the award for Worst Actor, marking a disappointing turn in his career following the acclaim of Life is Beautiful. 26. Jack Wilde, Oliver 
At the tender age of 16, Jack Wilde burst onto the scene with his captivating performance as the artful Dodger in Oliver. His nomination for Best Supporting Actor signaled the beginning of what many hoped would be a flourishing career in Hollywood. However, Wilde's trajectory took an unexpected turn as he struggled to find success on the big screen. Despite his early accolades, Wilde found refuge in TV, landing roles on shows like H.R. Puff and Stuff and Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Additionally, he pursued a music career in the early 70s, showcasing his versatility as an entertainer. Unfortunately, Wilde's personal demons began to overshadow his professional achievements. By his early 20s, he battled alcohol addiction and later was diagnosed with diabetes. Tragically, in 2001, Wilde faced a devastating diagnosis of oral cancer, which led to the removal of his tongue and voice box, rendering him unable to speak. He relied on his second wife, Claire, to communicate for the remainder of his life, until his passing at the age of 53 in 2006. 25. Josephine Hull, Harvey Josephine Hull's name might not ring a bell for most movie buffs, but for theater enthusiasts in the early 20th century, she was a familiar face. With a string of successes on Broadway, including the original production of You Can't Take It With You, Hull established herself as a force to be reckoned with in the world of theater. Transitioning to the silver screen, Hull brought her stage expertise to Frank Capra's Arsenic and Old Lace, earning acclaim for her comedic prowess. However, it was her performance in Harvey that truly solidified her legacy, earning her the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for the portrayal of the eccentric sister to Jimmy Stewart's Elwood P. Dowd. Hull's ability to embody matronly characters with comedic flair was unmatched, leaving an indelible mark on Hollywood. Despite her late start in film, Hull continued to grace the stage and television screens until 1955. However, her presence in Hollywood dwindled, raising questions about the lack of suitable roles for a seasoned actress of her caliber. While she remained highly regarded by her peers, her Hollywood career remained relatively brief, with just one film credit following her Oscar win, leaving fans to wonder what might have been. 24. Katina Paxanu, For Whom the Bell Tolls in the grandeur of 1943's For Whom the Bell Tolls, amidst the star power of Gary Cooper and Ingrid Bergman, Katina Paxinou emerged as a scene stealer with her portrayal of a bold, brash, and unrefined gypsy. Despite the film's monumental success, Paxinou's standout performance hinted at a promising future as Hollywood's go-to character actress. However, despite the acclaim she received, Paxanu's Hollywood career failed to take off as expected. In the ensuing years, she appeared in only seven American films, none of which replicated the success of For Whom the Bell Tolls. Struggling to find the right role, Paxanu eventually returned to Greece in the 1950s, where she co-founded the Royal Theatre of Athens with her husband, Greek director Alexis Minotis. 23. Mercedes Rule, The Fisher King Mercedes Rule may be best remembered by many moviegoers as Tom Hanks' concerned mother in Big, but it was her performance as the grounded and supportive wife in Terry Gilliam's The Fisher King that truly showcased her talent. Rule's portrayal earned her the Best Supporting Actress Award, marking a significant moment in her career. However, despite this recognition, her journey in Hollywood took an unexpected turn. Following her acclaimed role in The Fisher King, Rule experienced a brief surge in her career, with appearances in projects like the adaptation of Lost in Yonkers and a small role in The Last Action Hero. These projects seemed promising, especially considering her recent Tony Award win. Yet, despite the initial momentum, Rule's Hollywood trajectory soon plateaued, leaving many puzzled by the sudden decline. What makes Rule's career trajectory particularly perplexing is the contrast between her accolades and subsequent opportunities. Winning both a Best Supporting Actress Oscar and a Lead Actress Tony Award within months should have catapulted her into the spotlight. 22. Ronald Coleman 
a double life. Ronald Coleman's journey in Hollywood is one marked by undeniable talent and early success. By the 1920s, he had already established himself as a certified star and leading man. His first two Oscar nominations came in 1930, setting the stage for a remarkable career that would culminate in an Academy Award win for Best Actor. Coleman's versatility as an actor allowed him to collaborate with esteemed directors such as Frank Capra, Ernst Lubitsch, John Ford, Louis Milestone, and Joseph L. Mankiewicz. His reputation as the consummate leading man only solidified his standing in the industry, making his Oscar win for portraying a method actor in George Cukor's A Double Life a fitting recognition of his talent. However, what followed after Coleman's Oscar win is perhaps more intriguing. Despite his established career and critical acclaim, Coleman gradually faded from the Hollywood spotlight. Three years after his Oscar triumph, he appeared in the underseen Champagne for Caesar before transitioning to a series of television roles. His cameo in the Best Picture winner Around the World in 80 Days and his final screen appearance in Irwin Allen's The Story of Mankind marked his last forays into film, released shortly before his passing. 21. Hang S. Noor, The Killing Fields Hang S. Noor's Oscar win for his role in The Killing Fields marked a significant moment in cinematic history. Not only did he become just the second non-professional actor to win an Academy Award, but he also stood as the second person of Asian descent to achieve this honor. Despite these groundbreaking achievements, Noor's promising career was tragically cut short when he fell victim to a senseless act of violence. Noor's portrayal in The Killing Fields was deeply personal, reflecting his own experiences as a survivor of the Cambodian genocide. His performance resonated with audiences, earning him critical acclaim and the highest accolade in the film industry. While many expected Noor to capitalize on his newfound fame and return to his medical career, he remained committed to acting, albeit in lesser-known films. However, Noor never quite reached the same heights of success as he did with The Killing Fields. Despite his talent and dedication, he struggled to secure roles that matched the caliber of his Oscar-winning performance. Tragically, his life was cut short in 1996 when he became the victim of a robbery attempt by an L.A. street gang. His untimely death marked the end of a promising career and left a void in the world of cinema. 20. Harold Russell, The Best Years of Our Lives Harold Russell's journey to an Oscar was unique in that he wasn't a professional actor. Rather, he was a real-life veteran who brought authenticity to his role in The Best Years of Our Lives. Director William Wyler was adamant that Russell's portrayal of Homer Parrish remained true to his own experiences as a war veteran, discouraging him from taking acting lessons and emphasizing the rawness of his performance. Following his Oscar win, Russell's foray into Hollywood was brief. Despite the acclaim he received for his role, he only took on two more acting jobs over the span of nearly 40 years. Instead, Russell focused his energies on personal endeavors and charity work, leaving behind a brief but impactful legacy in the world of film. 19. Maggie McNamara – The Moon is Blue Maggie McNamara's rise to fame began with her portrayal in the controversial film The Moon is Blue in 1953, earning her a nomination for Best Actress. Despite the recognition, McNamara's career trajectory took an unexpected turn as she clashed with studio expectations and struggled with personal challenges. After her Oscar-nominated role, McNamara signed with 20th Century Fox and appeared in the 1954 film Three Coins in the Fountain. However, her refusal to conform to Hollywood's standards, including posing for certain photos and relocating to L.A., strained her relationship with the studio. Subsequent opportunities dwindled, and by 1963, McNamara found herself in a small role in The Cardinal and an episode of The Twilight Zone. Unable to sustain her acting career, McNamara took on a job as a typist while grappling with severe depression. 
Tragically, on February 18, 1978, she succumbed to her struggles, ending her life at the age of 49. Gosh, that's the first time I've even seen one. I don't know what to say. I'm completely at a loss for words. 18. Eva Le Gallienne. Resurrection. Eva La Gallienne's legacy in the theater world was unparalleled, earning her an honorary Tony Award in 1964 for her remarkable 50-year career. Despite her illustrious stage achievements, her transition to film was relatively subdued until her nomination for Best Supporting Actress in 1981 for Resurrection, a film that marked her return to the big screen after two decades. Born in Britain and raised in America, Le Gallienne's passion for the arts led her to become a Broadway sensation by the age of 21. In 1926, she founded the Civic Repertory Theater, where she not only acted but also directed and produced, cementing her status as a trailblazer in American theater. While her cinematic success may not have matched her theatrical triumphs, Le Gallienne's impact on stage and screen remains indelible paving the way for off-Broadway and regional theater movements that would follow in the 20th century. Her nomination at the age of 82 also underscored her enduring relevance and influence in the world of entertainment. 17. Justin Henry, Kramer vs. Kramer Justin Henry made history as the youngest Academy Award nominee ever when he received a Best Supporting Actor nomination at the tender age of 8 for his role in Kramer vs. Kramer, holding his own alongside industry heavyweights Dustin Hoffman and Meryl Streep. Despite this early recognition, Henry's acting career didn't soar to the heights one might have expected, though he did leave a lasting impression as Molly Ringwald's pesky younger brother in the John Hughes classic Sixteen Candles. Talk about a memorable performance. However, the glitz and glamour of Hollywood eventually faded for the young New Yorker, and by the turn of the century, acting opportunities had dried up. Undeterred, Henry embarked on a new path, retraining as a digital media professional. Today, he serves as the Director of Sales Western Region for June Group, a Los Angeles-based social media platform business, proving that sometimes success takes unexpected turns. 16. Mary Badham to Kill a Mockingbird In 1962, Mary Badham captured hearts with her portrayal of Scout Finch in the timeless classic To Kill a Mockingbird, earning herself a place in cinematic history as the youngest actor ever nominated for an Academy Award in her category. Despite her early acclaim, Badham's acting experience ebbed and flowed over the years. However, in 2005, spurred by the encouragement of actor, writer, and director Cameron Watson, Badham emerged from retirement for a special cameo in the film Our Very Own, starring opposite Keith Carradine. This return to the screen hinted at a renewed interest in acting, particularly when Watson managed to reconnect with Badham in Monroeville, Alabama, where she was attending a stage adaptation of To Kill a Mockingbird. In a delightful twist of fate, Badham made her triumphant return to the stage in March 2022, portraying Mrs. Dubose in the U.S. national tour of Aaron Sorkin's stage adaptation of To Kill a Mockingbird. 15. Quinn Cummings, The Goodbye Girl Quinn Cummings made quite a splash in Hollywood as a child star, earning herself an Oscar nomination at the age of 10 for her role in The Goodbye Girl. Despite this early success, however, her transition to adult roles proved challenging, with her next significant big screen appearance not occurring until 1989 in the drama Listen to Me. However, Cummings continued to make appearances on TV, gracing screens in popular shows like Starsky and Hutch, Beretta, and Hail to the Chief before her final on-screen appearance in an episode of Blossom in 1991. Talk about a fitting title for her debut film, right? But Cummings wasn't content to fade into obscurity. Instead, she found her true calling as a writer, penning two books on parenting and education and contributing to esteemed publications such as People, Time, and The Wall Street Journal. Not stopping there, she even invented a successful baby sling called The Hip Hugger. 
Who needs more Oscar glory when you can revolutionize parenting accessories, right? 14. Piper Laurie, The Hustler Piper Laurie's Hollywood journey was marked by accolades and reinvention. A three-time Oscar nominee, Laurie garnered recognition from BAFTA and the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for her standout performance in The Hustler alongside Paul Newman. Beginning her career with Universal International at just age 17, Laurie shared the screen with luminaries like Newman, Rock Hudson, Tony Curtis, and even Ronald Reagan. However, disillusioned by the industry's treatment of her and the limited scope of roles available to young actresses, Laurie took a hiatus from Hollywood. But her return was triumphant, with Laurie re-emerging more than a decade later to breathe life into complex and tormented female characters, continuing to establish herself as an influential actress. 13. J. Davidson, The Crying Game J. Davidson's Hollywood journey is as enigmatic as the roles he portrayed. Discovered at a party while working as a fashion assistant, Davidson skyrocketed to fame with his captivating portrayal of a transgender woman in the groundbreaking film The Crying Game. Despite receiving critical acclaim and a Best Supporting Actor nomination for his performance, Davidson chose to retreat from the spotlight after just one more film, the 1994 sci-fi epic Stargate. Returning to the fashion world, Davidson became a poster boy for androgyny, embodying a reclusive and reluctant star persona. His departure from acting was deliberate, as he expressed to the Seattle Times decades ago. Quote, I don't want to make an impression on the world. I don't want to make an impression on society. That's not important to me at all. With that, Davidson bid farewell to Hollywood, leaving behind a legacy of mystery and talent. Drink. What is this? A superstitious drink. 12. Cher. Cher's Oscar winning performance in Moonstruck catapulted her to the forefront of Hollywood, showcasing her dynamic range as an actress. However, despite her undeniable talent, subsequent films like Faithful and Burlesque failed to garner the critical appreciation and box office success she had hoped for. It's almost as if the Academy Awards swept her away from the bustling streets of Hollywood, leaving her career at a crossroads. While her acting career may have hit a plateau, Cher refused to be confined to a single realm of entertainment. Making a triumphant return to the pop charts in the late 1990s with the iconic hit single Believe, Cher proved herself to be an indomitable icon of pop culture and entertainment, transcending the boundaries of Hollywood stardom. 11. Kim Basinger, LA Confidential Kim Basinger's rise to stardom was marked by her portrayal of hot sex symbols in films like Nine and a Half Weeks, My Stepmother is an Alien, and Blind Date. However, it wasn't until her role in the 1997 classic, L.A. Confidential, that her acting prowess was truly recognized, earning her the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Despite this prestigious accolade, Basinger's career took an unexpected turn for the worse with subsequent films failing to capture the same magic. Gone was the allure of her character Lynn Brocken from L.A. Confidential, replaced by lackluster performances in movies like 8 Mile, where she portrayed Eminem's mom but failed to shine. With a string of disliked movies under her belt, Bay Singer's star power began to fade, a common fate for actors whose films fail to resonate with audiences. 10. Louise Reiner – The Great Ziegfeld Louise Reiner's Oscar records once marked her as a trailblazer in the film industry. She was the first performer to win two Oscars and the first to win them in consecutive years. Additionally, at the age of 28, she was the youngest performer ever to achieve this feat. Even in her later years, Reiner remained the oldest living Oscar winner until her passing at the age of 104. However, despite her early success, Reiner's career soon took a nosedive, becoming one of the first notable victims of the Oscar curse. Winning Academy Awards for her second and third films proved to be a double-edged sword 
As Reiner lamented, quote, For my second and third pictures, I won Academy Awards. Nothing worse could have happened to me. 9. Catherine Burns, Last Summer Catherine Burns made her mark in Hollywood with her role as Rhoda in the 1969 film Last Summer. Critics hailed the film, with Roger Ebert going so far as to say, quote, You know you're in the presence of greatness. He specifically praised Burns, saying, quote, That feeling came to me twice during Frank Perry's Last Summer, and both times the actress on screen was Kathy Burns. Despite the acclaim for her acting, Burns faced harsh criticism for her appearance, which took a toll on her. Following her acting career, Burns maintained a low profile. In June 1989, she married Kenneth Shire, and little is known about her life thereafter. Shire revealed that Burns resented the publicity and scrutiny that came with her acting career, particularly her role in Last Summer. He mentioned that she wanted to be remembered as a published writer of novels, distancing herself from her past in Hollywood. 8. Jeanne Dujardin Jeanne Dujardin captured hearts and the Academy Award for Best Actor with his portrayal of silent movie star George Valentine in the 2011 film The Artist. Valentin. Despite his success, Desjardins encountered challenges in Hollywood due to his thick French accent. While accents can be overcome, Desjardins' transition to Hollywood roles has been limited, with his most recent appearance being a minor role in Michael Bay's Transformers The Last Night. In his native France, Desjardins is a beloved talent, known for his charismatic screen presence and comedic prowess. He gained recognition for his roles in films like the espionage spoof OSS-117, Cairo, Nest of Spies, 2006, and the Cannes Film Festival award-winning The Artist, 2011. However, his Hollywood career has yet to reach the same heights, with his accent proving to be a barrier to securing significant roles in the industry. 7. Linda Hunt – The Year of Living Dangerously in Mel Gibson's The Year of Living Dangerously, Linda Hunt delivered a remarkable performance as a male photographer of short stature, earning her the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. However, Hunt's real-life stature became a hurdle in her pursuit of powerful roles in Hollywood. Despite appearing in films like Kindergarten Cop and TV shows like NCIS Los Angeles, she struggled to secure roles that matched the caliber of her award-winning performance. Standing at just 4 feet 9 inches tall, Hunt is the first and only performer to win an Oscar while portraying a member of the opposite sex without being transgender. Her portrayal of Chinese-Australian photographer Billy Kwan showcased her exceptional talent, but her career afterward largely comprised voiceover work, niche roles, and a prominent five-season stint on NCIS Los Angeles. 6. Tatum O'Neill, Paper Moon Tatum O'Neill made history as the youngest actress ever to win an Oscar at the age of 10 for her role in Paper Moon. Her portrayal displayed a level of maturity and sensibility far beyond her years, earning her widespread acclaim. Despite this early success, O'Neill's transition into adulthood did not bring the expected career trajectory. Following her Oscar win, O'Neill appeared in films like Little Darlings and The Bad News Bears, showcasing her talent and potential. However, as she entered adulthood, she found it challenging to secure roles that capitalized on her early promise. Instead, she found herself relegated to minor roles in films, overshadowed by her past achievements. Five, Marley Matlin, Children of a Lesser God. Marley Matlin made a groundbreaking debut in her first film, portraying a deaf woman in Children of a Lesser God. Remarkably, Matlin is deaf in real life, bringing authenticity and depth to her performance. Her portrayal of a deaf woman navigating a love story with a speech teacher earned her the prestigious Academy Award, a testament to her talent and dedication. However, despite her remarkable debut and critical acclaim, Matlin faced challenges in finding substantial roles in Hollywood. Opportunities for deaf actors were scarce, limiting her options in the industry. 
While she appeared in a few movies and TV series post Children of a Lesser God, none matched the impact of her Oscar winning debut. 4. Jocelyn Lagarde, The Dark Angel In a remarkable turn of events, Jocelyn Lagarde, who primarily spoke Tahitian and French and weighed 300 pounds, delivered a compelling performance as Queen Malama Kanakoa in The Dark Angel. Despite her limited English proficiency, Lagarde's portrayal impressed audiences and critics alike, earning her a nomination for Best Supporting Actress in her only feature film role. However, The Dark Angel marked both the debut and swan song of Lagarde's acting career. She remains a unique figure in Oscar history, being the only actor to receive a nomination for their sole on-screen appearance. While her nomination signaled progress in Hollywood's representation, the film itself was emblematic of a bygone era, contrasting with the emerging trends of new Hollywood. 3. Diane Varsi, Peyton Place Diane Varsi burst onto the Hollywood scene with her debut screen performance in Peyton Place, earning an Academy Award nomination and instant recognition for her talent. However, despite her early success, Varsi quickly grew disillusioned with the industry, finding the acting profession, quote, personally destructive. After a brief stint with one more screen role in Compulsion, 1959, Varsi made a radical decision to leave Hollywood behind. She relocated to Bennington, Vermont, seeking a simpler and more fulfilling life away from the spotlight. Her departure from the film industry lasted until 1965, when her interest in acting was reignited after her contract expired. Farsi returned to acting with a series of low-budget features and a notable television appearance on a two-part episode of Dr. Kill There in 1966. However, she remained selective in her roles, opting for projects that resonated with her artistic sensibilities. In 1971, she found fulfillment in portraying a compassionate nurse in Dalton Trumbo's anti-war film, Johnny Got His Gun. Despite a few more TV and film projects, including a TV movie titled The People, 1972, and a feature film, I Never Promised You a Rose Garden, 1977, Varsi's career trajectory gradually declined. Her decision to step away from mainstream Hollywood productions limited her opportunities in the industry. 2. Dexter Gordon, Round Midnight Dexter Gordon, known as Long Tall Dex in the jazz world, seamlessly transitioned from celebrated musician to acclaimed actor with his role in Round Midnight. Portraying a character not unlike himself, Gordon's performance earned him an Oscar nomination, marking a significant milestone in his career. Despite not clinching the Best Actor Oscar, Gordon's talent was also recognized with a Grammy Award for the film's soundtrack, showcasing his enduring influence and versatility across multiple artistic realms. Additionally, he secured a small but memorable role alongside acting heavyweights Robin Williams and Robert De Niro in Awakenings, further solidifying his presence in Hollywood. Gordon's return to America in 1977 was met with critical acclaim, as he released a series of well-received records that cemented his status as a jazz icon. However, Round Midnight remained his sole feature film role, leaving audiences yearning for more of his magnetic on-screen presence. Tragically, just as Gordon's popularity reached new heights, his promising career was cut short by illness. In 1990, he succumbed to cancer at the age of 67. 1. Catherine Ross Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid Catherine Ross soared to stardom as the epitome of beauty for the Woodstock generation, propelled into the limelight by her captivating performance in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. However, despite the initial frenzy of success between 1967 and 1969, Ross encountered a prolonged dry spell in Hollywood, with forgettable roles dominating much of her career thereafter. It wasn't until six years later, in 1975's The Stepford Wives, that Ross showcased her acting prowess in a role that truly resonated. Playing an independent and free-spirited wife amidst a backdrop of eerie suburban perfection, Ross delivered arguably her strongest performance to date, 
Yet, despite this temporary resurgence, Ross found herself caught in a string of lackluster films, including the star-studded disappointment The Betsy 1978 and a return to television with a role in the primetime soap opera The Colbys, 1985. In 1991, Ross and her husband, Sam Elliott, collaborated on the television adaptation of Louis L'Amour's novel Conagher, delivering a remarkably affecting Western tale that showcased their remarkable talents. Even as Ross continues to occasionally grace the screen with her presence, her work remains consistently strong. A testament to her enduring talent, often overshadowed by her iconic beauty and her youth. One notable example of Ross's enduring talent is her solid performance in Donnie Darko, 2001, where she portrayed Donnie's psychiatrist with depth and nuance, reminding audiences of her exceptional acting abilities beyond her renowned beauty. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more fascinating insights into the world of entertainment. And let us know in the comments which actor's disappearance surprised you the most. See you in the next video.